Hey guys, this is Trey with Total Justice Gaming. Um, this is uh, the uh, deck that I took to Indianapolis Regionals. Uh, I took sixth place with this deck. Um, so it's it's my Thunder Empire deck. Um, my buddy is the uh, Unyielding Rampage Dragon Bots. Um, he is the 734 size 2, pay 1 gauge to call naturally can't be destroyed like all the other bosses that are out thus far and then um when he attacks and destroys your opponent's monster you can stand it and then if you're at four life or less this card's attacking uh this card can uh, yeah it's attack cannot be nullified if it's attacking long all right so that's the buddy there's my flag uh, we're gonna get into the uh size threes so I played three Modernized Dragon Deity Dynamis. Um, Dynamis is a 726 size three. Call cost put the top two cards of your deck in your gate in this card's soul and you pay three gauge. Sorry guys. Um, first static ability is the abilities of this card on your field cannot be nullified by your, by your opponent's card effects. His other ability is if you have an item equipped, this card gets plus 2,000 attack, plus penetrate, and plus counterattack. And then he has a standard move, double attack, and soul card. So this card is, is really good. I love it. Um, if you have your board correct and say you combo with the, uh, if I can find it real quick, I'll show you a, a short picture. Uh, just to where you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Had them somewhere. Ah, here we go. Somehow they got mixed up. Um, all right, so it goes. It goes really well with the arc sword, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. Um, so if you have the arc sword on board, the arc sword gets plus two k to everything. Uh, so that'll make with his whole static abilities, all the stuff that he gets, all his pluses. He'll be an eleven two six with. Penetrate, counterattack, move, double attack, and soul guard. So that's it's a really good size three. It does have a hefty cost, but it is completely balanced with the card's overall abilities. Um, but that's it's I like it as a three of in this deck. Um, all right, so we're gonna move on size two. So of course our buddy is the rampage bot. So we play four of them. So I explained what he did earlier. So there's that. Then for our other size twos, our remaining size twos, we play three of the OG Demon Lord Dragon Bots. Um, seven, two, four, same exact stats, same exact call cost, pay one gauge. Uh, the same ability of can't be destroyed by your opponents. Uh, dur cannot be destroyed during your turn. And then uh, his ability, in case you don't remember, is at the beginning of your attack phase. For this turn, this card gets double attack. But then if you have four less life, he gets triple attack and plus 3,000 power instead. So we run that as a three of. So uh, four, uh, seven size twos total. And then um, for size ones, we run four misfiring demon globes. Um, he's a three one one. He has the uh, split the reward ability. Uh, when another thunder, thunder empire monster enters your field, put the top card of your deck in your gauge and you draw a card. Uh, it can only activate once per turn. It's a name state ability, so you can't call multiples and try and activate different cards effects. Um, when this card attacks for this turn, uh, another card on your field gets plus one crit, so that is monsters or items um, get plus one crit, so that just helps a lot. Um, overall, he's a good size one. Um, balance the effect with the stats, so overall he's, he's really good. Um, next up, our remaining size ones, we play three Replenisher Pentar. He is the 3-2-1 that when he enters the field, if you have an item equipped, a Thunder Empire item equipped, you draw a card. Um, there's not too much to say about him, he just kind of lets us get through the deck pretty fast. Um, but So seven size ones in total. Um, and the last monster that we play is our tech one of zero, uh, two, two, one. Tiny flame dragon linear. Um, this, uh, he can only be called to the center, but he's like a boomerang dragon. At the end of the turn, if this card attacked, you may bounce him back to your hand. So, I mean, he's good. It gets you at least four attacks per turn, five if you have any bots that has double attack, six if they have the triple attack, seven if you have this one and they just have a huge board and then um depending on which weapon maybe eight attacks at least um anyways he's a good one of so that's all for our monsters we're gonna move on to our items real quick so we play four 
of the Demon Lord Sword Drago Royal. It is our 3 2 with an equip cost of pay one life. Um, if you have a monster with ba uh, bots in its name on your field, uh, that card and this card get plus 6,000 power, so this will be a 9,000 attack weapon when you have bots. And then um, the bots will be a uh, 13k attacker. And then if you have 4 life or less, this card gets double attack, so this is the other weapon we were talking about earlier, uh, well just a second ago. Um, this card is good for the simple fact that if your opponent tries to float you at one lo uh, 5 life, uh, you just pay the life, equip this card. Even if you already have an item equipped, just equip over it. It gets you down to the four and makes you just to where you turn the game completely around in your favor if it already wasn't. And normally you just win at that point. Um, but overall, this is a good weapon. Definitely run it as a four of them. And then our other weapon, we run three of the um, Arc Dragon Sword. This is the one from the original secret pack with the original bots. Uh, this is a 6-2, pay one gauge to equip. Well, this card, this card in your field cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, so that's also really good for it. Uh, people tend to like to blow up items a lot here in this meta, so it helps out. Um, and then it's other static abilities, all Thunder Empire monsters on your field get plus 2,000. So it makes our bots swing for 9,000 constantly. If it's the OG bots, it makes it swing for 12. It makes the Dynamis swing for 11. So. And, and it gives all of our little bitty monsters that only have three, uh, our size ones become 5k size ones, so it's, it's pretty good. Um, that's all for the weapons. We're going to move on to spells. Um, this is a, alright, first spell is uh, Bot's X-Link. Uh, we play four of it. Um, this card, as far as I'm concerned, should be mained in every Dragon World um Every Dragon World deck, no matter what it is, and then um, but uh, okay. So this card can only activate if you have attacked three more times this turn. Counter. Look at three cards from the top of your deck. Put one, put one in your hand. Put the other two into your gauge, and then you gain a life. So it's a major gauge engine. It lets us search for stuff that we may need. Um, say impacts to finish out the turn to end the game, or shields for the next turn, or if we already have either one of those and we're not just gonna, we're just not gonna get there. Maybe set up monsters if we can't protect the bots, we just get to another bot. So it's 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 all around. It's a great card. Um, so we're gonna move on to our shields really quick. We play four arc dragon shield. Um, this is the Thunder Empire exclusive shield. The uh, All the shields are the same. You can only cast it if you're an attack on your opponent's turn, if you do not have Monster Center, and if I have a Thunder Empire on the field. Pay a gauge, nullify the attack, and draw a card. Then we also play four copies of the Blue Dragon Shield. Uh, you can only cast it if you're an attack on your opponent's turn. Don't have Monster Center, nullify attack, and gain a gauge. And then our other two shields, we play two green shields. We were trying out the, um, the I think it's the blade shield or something. Um, it was not, do, it did not make the cut for the uh, tournament, so we rotated back in the green shields. Um, same, same restrictions as all the other shields. Nullify the attack and gain a life. So we play a total of 10 shields, four, four, and two. Um, that's it for the shields. The rest of our spells are a lot of two ofs. We play two dragon spell hiding bombers. Um, this is the dual world spell that uh, you can only cast it during your opponent's turn, pay a gauge, counter return monster with 5,000 or less defense to its owner's hand, or destroy it. So it's really good in the mirror match, facing off against bots. You just bounce the bots back to their hand, and it just slows down their whole turn. Um, we also learned something right before the uh, Indianapolis Regionals. If your opponent is playing Chaos, and they use that impact that deals crit equal to the center monsters, as long as they don't have two of the good gear god with the 6k defense, you can bounce one of those back and take only three crit, hopefully. But um, overall, it's a good card, at least the two of them. Um, we play our extra draw spell because we needed more draw effects in this deck. So we play Sky Dragon Divinity. It's a dual world, ancient world dragon spell. It's also a guardian's card. Um, you can only cast it if you have 10 or less cards in your drop zone. Pay one gauge, pay one life. Put three cards from your drop zone on the bottom of your deck in any order. 
if you do draw two cards, you can only cast this once per turn. It's really good. I recommend it in just about every Dragon World deck and Ancient World deck if you can manage to fit it in there. Um, it just helps a lot early game. Um, moving on, we play uh, Two Heaven Sunshine. Um, this card is really good. Um, it lets us uh, tutor from our deck. Uh, depending on what our opponent has on board. So we'll get into it real quick. Uh, so cast cost pay a life. Destroy a monster on your opponent's field. If you do, call one Dragon World or Guardians monster of the same size from your deck by paying its call cost. And then you can only, you shuffle the deck and then you can only cast this monster. This, this card works against every deck. And it helps against every deck. This card is also the reason why we decided to throw our tech one of zero back into the thing. Just to where we had at least one size for everything. So we had a response to everything. Um, this card overall is a great card. Um, you play it first before you start calling other stuff. And say they play size ones. Well, I can just search out a globes from my deck and then call something from the, my hand and just profit even more off that. All at a cost of one life. So, like... This card overall is good. Um, Guardians, you need to main board three. This, at least, main board two. Hopefully three, if you can find the room. I could not. But um, moving on, um, we play two copies of In the Name of the Thunder Empire. This is our uh, pay two life to cast it. Choose uh, two Thunder Empire monsters from your drop zone and call them separate areas by paying their call costs. You can only cast it once per turn. This is a uh, this this card comes in handy a lot, especially late game when they float you at five or float you at six. If you don't have the hand advantage you want, just call this and call your board back and keep your hand advantage. Um, it's it's overall it's a really good card. Um, I used to main board three, but I had to cut it back. I was seeing it a little too much and not seeing enough of my other stuff that I needed, but um, overall this card is good. Um, and then we play two copies of Bots X again. Uh, this card's pretty simple. Pay gauge, stand a monster with bots in its name on your field. It's not once per turn, so if you got the gauge, you can just keep standing bots over and over again. Um, it helps a lot, mainly with our buddy, because our buddy, if I'm not at four left, a life or less, um, our buddy's weakness is people nullifying my monster's attack because I only have technically standard one attack on my buddy. Um, if they nullify the attack, then I can't destroy the monster. So I need to be able to restand it if I have to, and then it just makes the other one, the OG bots, uh, if he's at triple attack, it just makes him go to four or five if I have both of them in hand. Um, it's also really good if you don't get the impact and they're at low life and you've already done all your swings and you use the X-Link and you top deck this, it's just, it, it, I've clinched it a couple times that way and it's helped me clinch games. It actually clinched me one game in, in the tournament. I was going to lose if I had to, had to go to another turn. So, um, then our last spell, we do a tech one of a Dragonic Thunder, Rage of the Thunder, M, uh, Thunder Dragon. Um, this is our, you can only cast if you don't have a monster center. Cast cost the top three cards of your deck into your gate, in your drop zone, sorry. Counter, destroy, size, one or less monster in your opponent's field. It's a good tech one of. The only deck this card does not work against is Gear Gods, Chaos, um, because they don't play anything that's less than size three, so... Of course, we sideboard this out when it comes to that. Um, but that's it for our spells. We're going to move into our impacts real quick, and then I will get into my side deck. Um, so we played two Thunder Lance X Tempest Busters. Um, this is our card that says pay three gauge, and you just auto win unless they can counter with a card to gain life. Um, you guys know what this do. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just five, five damage for three gauge can be revived. So it's, it's just great all around. Um, then the other impact we chose, and this actually surprised at least five people at tournament. Um, some people I just talked to, some, most of them that I faced. Um, so this is the Drum Bunker Dragon Drill Ram Buster Break Impact. It's the 10,000 three crit, 6,000 defense, size two. And then... Um, it's call cost is put a monster from your field into this card soul and pay three gauge. 
During the battle, this card is attacking a monster on the center. Your opponent cannot use counters at all. Um, and then its other ability is when it deals damage to your opponent, destroy all cards on your opponent's field. It has Penetrate and Soul Guard. So, this card came in handy most of all against uh, Black Dragons. Uh, because they have that set spell, I uh, forget the exact name, that lets you just pay 2 gauge and rest anything. So, like, I'd call bots, and I'd, I'd set my board up. i say enter battle, they rest the bots because that's what they feared. Then they'd be down to one gauge. So I just swing with my other stuff, my item, and my other little size one or whatever. And then I'd impact, I final phase and impact call this. Swing, they couldn't do nothing because they didn't have a defense for it. And I board wiped them, so I got rid of the spell, which turned the whole game around because then the next turn I just completely won the whole thing. But it's good. I like it as a two up. Um, this card really was clutch in uh, four out of six games. This card, or four out of six matches, this card was very clutch. It always came in when I needed it. All right, so that's the end for the main deck. We're going to go into the sideboard really quick. Um, so we play two uh, Fame Military Divisor Fannings. Um, He's a size one that pay one gauge, two, three, one. Um, while he's on the board, none of my Thunder, Thunder Empires can be rested or returned to hand, so that's monsters and items and set spells. If there are ever any good set spells, can't be returned to hand either. Um, we could not find the room to main board this, and we knew what the meta was going to be going into Indianapolis. It was mainly chaos and bots, so there's not that much resting going on. So we just had this just in case for the odd matchups, but um, that's out of two of. Um, we played two removes, um, pay a gauge, put up two cards from souls on the field into the drop zone. Um, we mainly put this in here just in case because our locals, every week there's um, Oni Assassins, and Oni Assassins are annoying, but if I can start off my turn without calling anything and giving them something to just wreck on my field, I just play this and it just kind of upsets part of it, especially since I get to pick. So um, if I look out and I choose correctly, I just get rid of stuff that would have hurt me during my turn or whatever. Um, I didn't really use it. The only other matchup, the only matchup I actually teched this in my deck for was uh, Neo's Y because they have a lot of soul. So, like, but other than that, I didn't use this card, so it was just there in case I needed it. All right. Um, Moving on to some other spells, uh, we played Drago Desperates. Um, we played them out of two of. Um, most people were playing Barbed Wire. I was playing Dragon World, so I thought, oh, let's play Drago Desperate. Um, it works slightly better, and it deals me a damage if I need to, if I, if they're floating me again at five, say, like most people try to. So pay one gauge, and I take a damage. Cast cost, uh, counter rest a size two or less monster or an item on your opponent's field. So. I played this over the bar wire because the bar wire only rests items. This card will allow me to rest size two LSs too, so it works really good against the mirror match. Um, and then it just allows me to take a damage if they float me. So overall, uh, as far as playing Dragon World, I think it's better than playing bar wire. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Our, we have a tech one of uh, Void Omni. Wicked Lord Nego Balls. Um, he's Nego Balls, guys. We tech this purely to hate on chaos because if I destroy a size 30, I just win the game. Um, so, I mean, you guys know what this does. So, like, it's it's literally hate chaos day because half of the people there were running chaos, so we had to tech this as a sideboard. Um, then we're going to move on. We teched in. These maximum skill breaking flames. Um, these are the old promo impacts. It's pay three gauge to cast it. You can only cast it if your life, if my life is five or less, and then my opponent has a monster. Or I don't have a monster center, and my opponent has a monster center. It's super conditional, but you're playing bot, so you don't normally ever have a monster center when it comes to your final phase. Um, put a monster from your opponent's center to the left or right and deal three damage. So. 
I got a ruling on this before I stuck this in the deck, and I was for sure, like, I made sure I found one of the judges the day before on the Saturday event. This card was mainly originally cited for a Thor, the Thor matchup. But this card works wonders against Chaos, because even if your opponent has a full board, all I have to do is fulfill the requirements, and I can move it on top of one of their other monsters, and their other monster does die, and I deal with three damage. So, like, against Chaos, this card is just stupid, too. So, we run it as a two of in the sideboard. And then our last tech was just kind of a last-minute thing that we thought about. In case we played an opponent that uh, we were having trouble controlling the board, uh, we played at, we teched the one impact Avalon. Um, so pay three gauge and then put a gate of the Forgiven uh, from your field to the bottom of your deck or a monster. Uh, when this card attacks, put up the three Dragon World of Guardians cards from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck in any order. If you put three, return all cards on the opponent's field to his or her hand and deal damage equal to the number. So we thought about this because in Guardians, sometimes you don't have the stuff, so it's not as good in Guardians. But for this as a one of in this deck, early to, I mean, like, once I get past turn two, I've normally got at least five cards always in the drop zone. And late game, I'm definitely going to profit off this, so this can win the game because, like, the effect blow up plus the attack on them is just stupid. But, um, this is all for our deck, guys. This is, uh, we got six place with this deck. Um, if you have any suggestions, I'm always changing the deck up, even though this actually did really good on my first, uh, regionals. Um, but, uh, leave any comments, let me know what you think. Um, uh, Trey from Total Just Gaming. See you later.